to what um, Shamaka, I think, Chidima, I think, said. So, yes, I was actually speaking from my angle of um, someone that wanted to apply for PhD. Um, but I will just use the story of um, two people, two, two people that I know, to tell this story. So, but let me, do, let me first start with what Anna said. So it's not just, in most cases, your SOP, they want to look at how you can connect a lot of things that has happened in your life together to show that you can succeed in grad school. You understand? They just want to, they just want to, please, so for please, you, please. that's Chia, your is not a bad. Okay, Chidima, Chidima is not a bad. Okay, continue. Okay, so they just want to see how you can put a lot of things together, your life experiences, your experiences in school, your internship, if you have the opportunity to volunteer, volunteer also, even if it's, if it's not a, a paid internship or paid volunteerism, you understand? Just the SOP. Now, let me give you the story of two people. Uh, one person that I know, um, he, he started uh, his master's um, in the US in the spring 2020, that's this last January. Um, you know, but one thing that helped him is the fact that he had a first class in school, you understand? Funny no, he got um, uh, first class. He got into a PhD program at um, Binghamton, that's SUNY. Um, in New York, he got to, in fact, and he's there now doing his master's and from his, I think it should be done. Another story is about another person. This one is even social science, not even engineering student that has, uh, that are always very good with their GRE score, always have high GRE score, and always, um, you know, most of them always have first class. You know, it's always somehow to have a first class in social science and arts, uh, English philosophy and all those things. So this guy too, he, he, he studied um, sociology uh, at first degree level in Unilag. Uh, he's at Duke currently doing a master's in something that is not even related to sociology at all. Yeah, yeah. And he had a second class offer. But what helped him was that he did not, he, only, he had only presented in one conference, one national conference. That's a national family planning conference in 2018. That is the only conference that he had on his CV. And he, do, he, he doesn't have um, any publication. As at the time that he applied, he didn't have any publication. His GRE score, I think, was like 309, but he got into Duke. People who know Duke very well know that Duke is one of the top universities in the world, not even in the US. Yeah, that's true. So all these things, you just have to... So for you, you are still working out on you. You are yet to write GRE. Try your best to work out and have a very good score. That is one. Try your best, work out, have a very good score. The people that are writing recommendations for you, let them write a very, very good recommendation about you. Send your CVs to people who have experience of this thing. Let them help you work on your CV. You know, there are ways that which you write as, you know, there are academic CVs, there are professional, there are different types of CVs. Write a very good CV. Your statement of purpose, craft a very good statement of, statement of purpose, you know, picking various, various um, uh, experiences that you have, internship, volunteer, um, NYSC, even life, uh, 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 life issues, even general issues. Just pick and just craft a very good SOP. And I think you are good to go. So, there are a lot of things. So there is not, this thing is not, um, it's not one plus one. Let me put it that way. You know, there are various ways to get this thing. You know, if you see that you are going to lack in this place, work hard on another aspect of your profile. For you, I will advise you, you are someone that I am very sure will have very good uh, background in mathematics and has a lot of time. If I had a lot of, NYC was one of the time that uh, I had a lot of time on my hand in the last maybe eight or nine years of my life. You understand? You are serving currently. Spend all your time reading your diary and have a very good score. If you have a score like all those Chinese and Indians, maybe you have a 315, 320. My sister, so you, 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 you will get it. I'm, I can tell you that. You get it. You get it. And you also, Chiman Chidima, you also spoke on recommendation letter. Um, is it John? John, I, I can't remember who helped us, who sent, help us with recommendation letters. Uh, yeah, I think John. But, so Sam, yeah. Sam, I only talked about my recommendation. Yeah. Like, I mean, you talked about the... the I, I talked about the process of getting my recommendation. Yeah, yeah, John, yeah, you talked about it, yeah, um, please. Uncle Sam. But you also, you also sent to people, right? Uh, no, I was not the one that sent. I think it was, I can't remember the person that sent it. Enyala, I think Enyala, maybe. No, it should, it's not Enyala. It wasn't no, Enyala, it was, yeah, it was a, a man, I can't remember. Oh, well, anyway, I can check you. you can also follow this guy on LinkedIn. His name is Babajide Milton. He, he posted some reference letters that were really good. Like, they were super good. Okay. Um, you can, write, you can write his name in the chat. Yeah, I'll write that. This, this letter. My, letter. my colleague, Milton. Yeah, my powerful, man, powerful letters. Like. Yeah, so, and then you can also send your email to me on Twitter. I will send your okay. email to uh, 
this guy that has sent recommendation letter for us, I mean, that's helping us. I'm not sure. Okay, so John, let us have you talk okay. with you. Um, talk about your recommendation letter process too. Oh, like, okay, what I said uh, last time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, sorry I joined it. The network here has been bad. You are welcome. Okay, yes, I, w I was talking the last time about the stress in getting recommendation, and now you can easily track your, track your fee. I finished some loud tech, and, and after the Ozu and Bozu of our long academic session, we get to not like our lecturers per se at times. It happens like that. But then there's nothing we can do. We, we need them, and we always need them. So for me, I think I saw Mr. Samuel recent post on Twitter, I think today or yesterday, he was talking about sending a new month message or something like that. Sending a new month message to, to the net. So that is something that I do. But then, it's not always easy on the first instance. Like, okay, let me just backtrack a little. I, when I joined, I heard us talking about Erasmus Mundus and the likes. I want to say I applied for Erasmus Mundus early this year last year, but I made only the reserve list. And when I wanted to, I made the reserve list. When I wanted to get my recommendation, I had to travel down from where I was serving down to down to school just to be able to interact like let them see my face again even though it's, it was less than a year yes less than a year after i just left school but then i understood that calling them on phone and telling and trying to introduce yourself that i'm so 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 and so person it's always kind of difficult yeah. so when i when i came to school in fact it was also during a strike period like latex is not for it was during a strike period but i was able to get i think there was a phd seminar going on so i waited waited for two days for two days, I stayed around for two days, just so that they can see my face. And so when I went there, I tried to discuss my postgraduate plans, my research plans and everything with them. And I discovered that even the meanest of people that you might think they are not friendly, they're not like that. If you discuss your plans with them, they always try to reason along with, with you as regards, as regards what you want to do. And so they were open like, okay, what, whatever you want me to do. And I think one key area is, for example, if you are applying to Europe, some middle schools allow you to upload your letters yourself so you can always get a letter handy for yourself like it can be somewhat genetic but then it can always save you at the nine minutes where you don't get your reply to response to you on time so i got that from the from about some two lecturers immediately i got that and then i dropped my mail and i wrote my research interests and i i dropped all my details for them so subsequently what i've been doing with them ever since then was to always frequently mail them see this see me now it's easier for me to Communicate now. They now remember that okay, this is the person that called me the other time. And in fact, when I called them, I think I was saying the last time when we had the last meeting that I applied to one school and I, when I put my replies email, I didn't even inform him that I want him to feel so 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 and so recommendation before we check. He had already done it because he was, he was already familiar with the name. And so every month, what I do is I just send them new month message to greet them and just not even talking about my postgraduate plans or anything. Yeah. Just to greet them and so they are familiar with the name. And so when they just see my name on anything that just pop up on their on their inbox. They just respond without me even trying to cajole them or anything. Again, they're already familiar with that. So I think it's, if you have left school, if you have left school, even if it's not too long, you might need to start building that rapport, that relationship with them. Again, you can just take it gradually. Like, for example, I'll be applying in, I think I'll be applying from September to December for US schools. And I've been following them up. And so my plan is I'm not even telling them about anything for now. I've not even told them that I will apply to five schools or, or so and so, but they are seeing my message. If I send them new month message, they reply back to me. And so we are flowing like that. So by the time I'll be needing them for recommendations, I will just put their name. They will get back to me. I'm just very certain about that. So you can try to gradually start building it from now. Within the space of three months, they get to know you and you're fine. Yeah. All right. That's been somebody said by a politician. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, I tell you, that's that's a good note. I mean, that's a very I, used good send, I'm I used to send them monthly messages on my mentors. In then I would send them monthly messages. I would send them um, all my professors, everyone, even the ones that have not started writing for me. <laughs> if I know the person does not know me, I will send it and put my name there. So gradually, by you shall want to know is this boy. Yeah. So, yeah. so I have. I guess. You want to say something, Simon? Yes, I have. I have a question as regards to recommendation letters, please. Yeah. So quickly, I want to know, you know, most of the times when you, when you are sourcing for, for admission, 
they most of the times don't allow you upload these letters yourself. They yeah. they are saying okay, put put the recommender's email or something. Yeah. And um, is it advisable? I want to ask now because most of our lecturers, like the school I finished from, they have a school email address. But most of the times, they often or not do not use that email address. They prefer using their normal Gmail and Yahoo mail. So in that case, is it is it will it have any effect on your application if you put the lecturer's Gmail? You know now the email is not affiliated to any institution. Would they be in doubt or of some sort or anything? Those of us that have won scholarship before, how did we do it? Must it always be uh, the, an email address that is affiliated with the school or something? Um, yes. I don't know if I can say something. Uh, okay, sure. Uh, uh, I would say from my experience, from uh, I applied to University of Abata, and one of my academic professor was uh, he gave me his uh, Gmail. Although I don't have to travel back, also I'm not in Nigeria. And then I called him that uh, so this is what happened. Though. They said they don't want uh, self email, that they prefer institutional email that they can verify. You can always talk to them. I believe most of the universities in Nigeria now they have institutional email. But the problem, Mr. San, you can attest, we always yeah. had the problem of following rules, even our professors. Uh, not because they don't have. In password. fact, one even told me has forgotten his password. <laughs> Hmm. Do you understand? And this, these schools, I had that before an issue with people opening email and they're using it as a, this thing reference. So it's best to talk to them that are ah, plead with them that the school is not accepting personal emails or that they said they want institutional emails that they can verify that that's why they always accept that one. But I, that's why they don't want I think this, uh, personal email. I, one of some of the schools that I um, applied to because I actually use some Gmails. I didn't use all at ui.edu.ng. I use some Gmail. And what they, the condition they give there is that if I'm using Gmail, they will do extra verification that, that means I'm giving, I'm permitting them to do extra verification on the email address. I said, fine. And I know some of the things they will do is to search the email to see if it's the email on their publications and all those stuff. So I think if we don't have a choice, it's better to use institutional Gmail, but if there's no choice at all, and that's the last thing you can do, just use Gmail, and they will do the extra version. But there are schools that say they don't want to accept Gmail. I think there's nothing you can do. I know many accept it with extra verification. So you just want to be sure that it's the person's email address. Yeah, thank you very much. Just want to be sure. Um, I think that's just, to, just another thing. Um, this is what I did speak yeah. Yeah. Um, Just to add to that, uh, you, you don't need to like go for all your, uh, your top professor of the, the advanced in the department. You don't know what I mean. Those that are evil. Like the senior professors in the department, you can find some um, assistant lecturer or lecturer to lecturer in that case. Those that are IT savvy, you know, that can quickly accept their email and do these things to uh, for you. That's why those that are here that are still in the university, if you try and uh, build rapport, Sam always said it. I always see some of his tweets on Twitter, uh, everything. Try to build rapport with all these people before you even after. And there's the supervisor that uh, you know, the young ones especially that are trying to get publications when you work on that then you try and participate as much as possible in writings and eventual publication one it helps your portfolio because they just need a writing sample from you to show that at least you have promise to do research and you can bet their money on two the person who you work with that professor he will be able to tell give you a very strong letter and you'll be able to mm. attest to uh, that research which you need and they will direct them to say, oh, we publish this together and this and this is challenging. You will be able to write a better letter for you, not the one you have to go and cajole them and talk to them and everything. So if you are here, if you are still in school, try to build that relationship. If just publish, you don't, uh, just maybe a low or middle tire journal. You don't have to make the top ones because of that. Just show that and then, one, you have a publication to your, to your health. Two, that professor you work with will be able to give you a stronger um, reference letter. And we'll be able to say more about your research and problems. Thank you. And you know, these days, um, lecturers are so busy. They just, um, it should be a problem actually for those who are not close to school. Many lecturers just ask to come, what do you want me to write? And then you start the book, so you must be ready to, you must have a template. Okay, most of the recommendations I, I wrote it and took it, um, there are some I will be with them and they write, okay, what did you say your GP was again? Oh, how many did you say you were in class again? And they'll be asking questions and I'll be responding and they'll be writing all those stuff. And then um, one other thing, most schools in the US, there's this um, right waving. They ask you if you want to waive the right yeah, to yeah, view yeah. your recommendation in the future. Now, I think it is wisdom to choose to waive the right. Okay? Because when many lecturers see that someone said he does not waive the right to see the recommendation in the future, the lecturers um, 
confronted me before that I didn't wait the right. What was the meaning of that? <laughs> you understand? And I had to explain to him that I'm sorry, sir. I didn't know that you know you don't want me to you want me to wave the light, something like that. Eventually, we still wrote the recommendation together, but he just told me, he said what he did when he saw that I didn't wave the right was I went online and checked what it means. The student says he does not wave the right, and he checked different professors' response to students in the US, how they view it. And he said, he thinks many professors don't think it is respect. That if you say you don't wave the right, they think you are disrespecting them. That's what he said. We had the relationship. Okay? So that's why he explained that. It's good to wave the right. Yeah. Yes, as one other professors that I did not wave the right, I quickly went there quickly. I waved the right that I don't want to see. Already. Yeah, that's <laughs> just right. That's a good one. So I, good. I also it's good to wave the right. Yes, uh, hello. Yeah, yeah, you are on. Yeah, I also remember something for some of us that you know you have a good rapport with your uh, recommenders, and maybe you've been you can't get to them. Maybe you don't have to travel from them. Uh, from the north to Lao Tech in the home or short to remind them. Some of these people are busy, they have families, your professors in Nigeria. Write the email with, to them and furnish them with an info of your achievements. Just to remind them that, oh God, do you remember when we did this together, when we published this? You, may have, you understand? So when we did this research together, this is what I'm doing now, this is what I'm trying to do. Make it as detailed as possible so that they will be able to incorporate all those things inside your letter. If it's someone that is willing to uh, sit down and write a letter, but if not, please go with Samuel Sam. Um, idea of uh, giving them a template and including all those uh, information. That's true. I love that. In fact, they'll be proud of you, like, oh, my student, yeah, you've achieved this. Wow, wow. That's beautiful. Okay, yes. Um, I want to say something. Okay, John. Yeah, I think, the, like, what you said about going to some lecturers that are tech savvy. Again, in the department, there are some lecturers that are not too busy. Not too busy in the sense that people don't really look at their side as those who want to go to, to the stop for recommendations and things like that. So in a way, if you if you go to if you go to those kind of people, they they are not choked up with activities too much. Students are not really pestering them. And so you might think that they are not approachable, but at times they become the best set of people to always respond whenever you need them. Because they are not there is no much pressure on them. But when you go to the those that everybody wants to like the top, uh -huh, the HODs, like that. Like I have a friend that finishes his first class of my department. He, he and the HOD were very close, and he pursued him for like four months before he was able to get a recommendation from him. That was that was very very serious. It's, it was kind of funny. Like, and this is one of the best students in the class. He was just busy. Not that he didn't want to unsign, but he was just busy. That's so there are some, and and one of the people that is standing in for me at the moment, he just returns to the department when we are about leaving. So it's not as though he taught me for like that. It was just like maybe standing in for another professor to supervise us. That's what he did, like that. But he's already a doctor. He just he finished his PhD only about living. And so he doesn't have nobody. In fact, I would say maybe I'm the only person he's standing in for in my department at the moment. Nobody disturbs him about recommendation. Nobody asks him about anything. So anytime I get to him, he just responds because he's not really choked up. And he understands everything. He's cool abroad also. So I think those kind of people just target those that are not really prominent like that. They always go well. And I was opportunity to also see the recommendation he wrote for me in one of my applications. I can tell you that he wrote very good, fantastic recommendation. That's good. You know, I was saying it last time that a friend of mine challenged one of our lecturers the recommendation he wrote for you, another friend, that, sir, you wrote a very weak recommendation letter. <laughs> and the man was very open. He said he didn't know he was writing a weak recommendation letter. He said he didn't know. <laughs> Just, he just thought he should just write something like I know him now, he's someone I know. <laughs> and then, then my friend was my friend just came back from Commonwealth Scholarship in UK then. So they respect put that first class. So I was telling me that no, he's not the right recommendation. He's, yeah, he's, he's good. Okay, I think I think there are two people that have not spoken here. Ch Chukwamata, I think. Okay, maybe they should talk. And Kemi. Okay, so let's hear from you, Kemi. Okay. Good evening. Previously, I was trying to introduce myself, but the network was cutting me off. Okay, I finished from Invest of Abuja. Oh, oh Abuja for my name as my department, and I'm targeting Europe for my master's 
for international studies. Okay, I actually have a question for you. So, during the visit of I was actually planning on getting my documents to that HSP. Sorry, um, Uluwake, maybe you should use the chat to ask the question then. If the network is weak, uh, let's get you from the chat. A scholarship, but I told you I work closely with supervisor during my project, and I work with him. That okay, I was going to ask the question when I about publication. I work with him with you know their resolution. Well, can, can you use the chat for your question? You, it seems your network is so weak. Let's use see. the chat for your question. Uh, she's okay. The network, the network is really poor. How, why is Abuja like that now? Capital. Okay. So Chukwamaka, let's quickly have you. Okay. My name is Ogoja for Chukwamaka. I studied science laboratory technology from Lado Kintola University of Technology. Um, okay, so I have some questions, although some have been answered actually. Actually, <laughs> someone told me that to get set of recommendations, you should target the professors in your department and all of that. That those ones are probably they place priorities to those in higher professions than those in lower professions. So I think that has been answered during the course of this discussion already. So I've gained from that. Then is it wise to apply to several scholarships at the same time? Because personally, I'm planning to apply to like a lot of scholarships that will be open. Sorry, so, come to the second question. Is it wise to apply to what? Several scholarships at the same time like several scholarships at the same time? Of course, apply as much as possible. If it is 20, apply. You never can tell. Yeah. Okay. As much as possible. Because you are eligible, so you just apply. You don't need if, to... you meet the recommend, if you meet the requirement, just keep on throwing the applications. Okay. And then if they come, then you decide also, your choice. Also, also, I want to ask, um, Around last month, I applied to a school. I got admission for this school, but I have to defer the admission because I didn't get the scholarship. So now I want to ask, um, I wanted to ask them if I could defer the scholarship till next day. Actually, the school is classified under Commonwealth Shared Scholarship. So I plan on reapplying again. But is it wise to write to them to ask for the next session? Uh, you, you that's UK, right? Yes. Come on, because my understanding of Commonwealth Share Designs every year, and they have a number of thoughts for a particular year. I don't know how UK, I may ask a friend. Oh, I'm sorry, have, can I add to uh, that? I think I can. Okay, please answer, Deborah. Okay, yes, so, the common. Okay. Okay. Let's <laughs> answer that. Continue, Deborah. Okay, no. The Commonwealth Shared Scholarship, like I also applied last year, so I have admissions to up to seven schools in the UK now, but I didn't win the scholarship for UK any of them. share admission. <laughs> so, UK, I we don't share it for you. <laughs> so I didn't win the scholarship to any of the schools. So I attended a um, scholarship seminar by um, Dr. Babajide Milton. So he, okay. he he was talking about the fact that we can actually defer our admissions. Like, okay. so what you do is go to the school's website and you check, yeah. you you check their the um, frequently asked questions, then you go to your the departmental thing, then get their email address. So you send them a mail that you want to defer your admission. So they'll, they'll tell you the further um, the processes you do. I plan to be maybe even next week. So I'll defer my admissions, then try again um, by November okay. this year. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. What you said, okay. you, Kamaka, you said you want the Commonwealth shared, right? No, no, not the Commonwealth shared. They add um, an internal scholarship in the oh. school. Which okay. Oh. Yes. So, but, but also, Sam, so, my understanding is that like Commonwealth shared changes their course and just and, and just school every year. Every year. 
So the, it doesn't. So if you if you saw a cost in Commonwealth share this year, it doesn't necessarily mean that you see the cost next year. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's yeah, true. that's true. That's true. Okay, so Oluwakemi, so I said you can ask your question in the chat. Okay, yeah, so good. So I think my HOD was telling me that school didn't, schools don't give transfers to them, and the admission is not it. Which school? I mean, I think there is a student copy of transcripts for every school except some special schools. Yeah? Not every university has student transcripts, though. <laughs> is it not Nigeria? Yeah. Not every school, actually. Ask it to be forwarded to your private mail or something. Maybe your pastor or somewhere, oh. somewhere where you can retrieve it and then use it. Yes. As simple as that. Do, do what Anna said. I request for the transcript, ask it to be forwarded to okay. your daddy's office or your mommy's office or your pastor's your church. Ah, so schools will not do it though. Okay. They will do it definitely. They will have to send they it. They will, they don't they will. have to. I mean, no, it's, I it's think it's peculiar to this school. I did the same thing, of course. Okay. We send it. And also, also, I want you to ask. Oh, Let me drop your questions on the chat. We can read it and answer. Uh, so I want to say something about that. Also, class. I want you to find that. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. So, the like they have been suggesting. I, I think, I think uh, maybe uh, we can take a time, maybe in our next um, Zoom meeting, to talk to trash this issue of transcript. It yeah. is becoming so incessant and them um, annoying. How yeah. can a student finish from a school and you don't want the student to have the transcript? Baba, it's because you've graduated and left. You've gotten another opportunity. <laughs> but you and I know the issue with Nigeria. We know no, what is wrong yeah, with these guys. Yeah. They don't it's want annoying. to. It's they annoying. Don't want that's the problem. They don't want to do it. And they don't want... How do you think they make money? They generate money from this thing. Even yeah, the one that will tell you eat transcript. Do you know what you still have to go through and pay? Apart from the money for the transcript. Even that's though they said it's eat transcript. It's just unfortunate that that is the maybe, system. Maybe we, just need to, maybe we just need to start a movement or something. This is becoming wicked. This is becoming, becoming <laughs> appalling. I think we can... We can, really, we can think about a change. I think yeah. if you add every less on Twitter, for example, I discovered Twitter is getting um, results for many things. If we can start something there and start dragging them, all these schools, maybe something can change. Who knows? <laughs> uh, they, are, they are not on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> they are on Twitter. Some of them definitely. It will get to them. Once the hashtag is trending, it can easily get yes, to them. Yes, we do a hashtag. I think we, we can. Yes, Twitter I support that. that. We tag NANS, we tag the um, National Assembly, we tag Ministry of Education, we yeah. tag the uh, National University of Education, we tag top people in the society. This, are, this, is, this is an issue that, you know, it's not, it's should not be hard, it should not be hard off. Can you imagine that, um, in fact, someone was, I was even shocked that in these developed countries that you can even be applying to, you might want to, you can defend your thesis in July and resume somewhere in, somewhere for maybe a PhD in August. And let me tell you, a friend in my department, in my research unit, she just defended her PhD last week. She will be resuming in August for a postdoc. Can in you imagine? Japan. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. This is, these are, I don't know. I don't know. I don't Please, know. maybe this transcript, um, Mr. Sam, maybe another session should be for transcript alone. Because yeah. the way we are going with this transcript in Nigeria, I don't know. People, people have lost admission and lost a lot of opportunities. Okay, let's let's. See. What hashtag should we use to drag this transcript on Twitter? Somebody suggested release transcripts on the chat. Release. That's what was on my mind. Release transcripts. <laughs> hashtag release transcripts. <laughs> hashtag release transcripts. If we can make it trend, I think probably people in authorities probably they will. I guess they will see it because it will later get to Punch and Vanguard and the rest. Yeah, they will see it later. Ms. Oluwakem is asking a question that uh, um, can she conduct the research with your prof? For the main part that you conducted the research with your prof, you can include it in your CV, you can include it in your CV. I mean, you did the research. Yeah. Conducted the research. And as much as... Can I come back to the transcript? And as much as you have knowledge of the research, quite all right, because 
some Latin happened to me when I was in my undergraduate, but I had a fair knowledge of the research, so I can easily defend it anyway. Yeah, that's okay, John, you want to add, come to the Yes, I want to add something. This last time we just discussed, and then we are John the yes. I want to say, while you are trying to do the canvas for the change, you can also think of strategic means to get your transcripts. For example, like my school now, we, we do get our results every semester and they are stamped. And I can tell you that that is what I've been using to apply to every day and it's accepted, like the compiled result for each semester. So if you have something like that, you can go also, you can go as well. Like every semester, we have compiled results with our grades. And so at the end, when we are graduating, it's also compiled and given to us. And so some people still go around waiting for uh, applying for to the student affairs for transcripts, things like that. Why others have just just can't all your results? The school official stamp is there already. So you just can't. That's what I've been using. In fact, I wasted money last year thinking I want to do it. And I didn't even need it again. If I'm applying this year again, it's still the same thing I'm using. It's accepted. So if you have something like that, I think it can go as well. Instead of you waiting so long for your transcript. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's um, John. Yeah. Uh, that's why um somewhere usually say uh, is some point. There is a noise in the background. Okay. Um. Uh, that's why someone usually mentioned this that especially those of you that want to go to the U.S. directly, try to target schools that do not require the official transcript at the point of application. Just go for the unofficial ones. And when you now get in, get into a school, you're happy, you know, you are uh, you are ecstatic about uh, the admission and the money that is coming. So you put, concentrate all your effort into going to your school, getting them to send the official directly to that school where you um, got your admission. For now, just deal with schools that just request for official unofficial transcript yeah so somebody asking a question does it is asking a question on the on the chat yeah does it research... i think i did something similar like this um actually is a research between um they were constructing um, a tram between asset here between a city in belgium here down to mass street in netherland is an unpublished work although it was done within my set it's what a, a project we did so one of the applications i did i included it and then at the end i put on published so one of the during the interview one of the professor asked me that um, what was the whole research all about so i explained to the professor he said it wasn't published I, he said yeah, there's no problem so he said I should explain what the whole research was all about. I should just summarize. So I think you can as well include it. And then at the end of which you just put on published. I don't know, but I think Mr. San can give a better answer to that. Yeah. Before, I think before Mr. San comes up, before Mr. That's... San comes up, um, I, what you have said is true. Um, when you go through people's CV, even some of these white guys, you see unpublished work. After they've written peer review publications in their CV, they will not write another editing on published work. Maybe it could be when you are working in a research institute, you had a project, the project report, this, yeah. the, the survey report or something, is an unpublished work. Or maybe you did a consultancy for an organization, is an unpublished work. Those, so okay. unpublished work is allowed, you can write it. Yeah, yeah. In fact, even class projects, you can include it in your SOP, statement of purpose. Class project, all those, is something you have done before. Yeah. I don't know if we can see one question. Be kicked out at you. Okay, so let's just let's just come back one more time and receive the last question. Yeah, then, thank you. Thank you very much. This is the last grace. Yeah. So please, I want to ask when we started before every other person joined. Uh, Sam was saying something about his masters being non thesis I want to ask. The, what are the main difference between that thesis masters and non thesis masters? He was saying something about going into professional field, but for somebody that wants to probably go into 